Blog Talk Radio. From Boulder, Colorado, over the top radio, I'm your host, George Thomas. Welcome to our fall race preview. There's two days left of the month-long Labor Day sale at cardosystems.com. Cardosystems, that's plural, dot com, where you'll find the Cardo BK1 and the BK1 Duo priced at 40% off. It's your opportunity to get the most popular communication system in Ultra at a fantastic price. Again, 40% off. BK1 is the gold standard for communicating with your crew, other racers, people at home. Uh, they're great for on-the-bike interviews, bike-to-bike, listen to music. Uh, it is just a fantastic system. And the website, once again, cardosystems.com. Labor Day sale is coming to an end tomorrow, 40% off. Now, if you like, you can try to win a BK1 Duo, which features two units. Uh, listen for the Cardo word or phrase of the show and message the answer to me via Facebook or Over the Top Radio. you got to like Over the Top Radio to do so and send your answer there. And the person with the most correct answers is eligible to win the BK1 duo. In case there's a tie, we're going to determine the winner via a drawing, and we will announce the winner in our post-508 wrap-up show, which will take place a day or two following the race. Now, our guest this evening is one of the most popular personalities in endurance bicycle racing. He is the race director of No Country for Old Men, Dex Took. Welcome to the show. Thank you, George. Happy to be here. Well, it's great to have you on. Um, let's jump right into us. Tell us about No Country for Old Men. How did it form? Well, No Country for Old Men born, is born of Ram. Uh, I'm a Ram veteran, and I believe that the West Texas region is one of the best kept cycling secrets there are, and I wanted to have a race out there. And so back in 2012, uh, no Country for Old Men was formed. The name stems from the movie, of course, and it's because a lot of the filming of that movie was done in the region, uh, in the West Texas region. Uh, I wanted to have a, uh, a, it was my race, so I could do it the way I wanted to, so I had a 383-mile race because that was my RAM number. And then after the initial year, uh, and we had Marco Ballo come out that year and just destroy the course. It's a beautiful area, lots of climbing, very challenging. And Marco came out there and scalded the course. And so then in 2012, I decided to add another distance to it, uh, the 208-mile race. And at that time, uh, it became part of the Texas Ultra Cup Series. And it also became a Ram qualifying. The 383 became a Ram qualifier. And we had a pretty good turnout in, in 13. And a guy you may have seen in the ultra race news lately by the name of Scott Lucart came out and scorched the 383 in 2013. In fact, his time and Marco's time were very close together, except they were on different, a little bit different routes. But then in 2014, I decided that why not have a 1,000-mile race? Uh, I believe that's a distance. Right now, there are 500-mile ultra races all over the nation, and they're all good races, uh, all different kinds of formats, and they're all excellent races. But really, if a person has done a 500-mile race and wants to challenge something more, there's really not anything else out there over the 500 except raw. And so I decided to introduce the 1,000-mile race. And I had two target areas when I did that. I was targeting the, the ultra racer that races 500 and wants to challenge himself more and, of course, I was also targeting the Race Across America uh, prospects that want to be able to do a race, a training race, prior to RAM. When I did RAM, uh, I, did a, I did a RAM mock training ride every month for about the last four months before RAM. And it was strictly a training ride where I took my crew out and I took my Pala vehicle out and we mocked it up just like we were doing RAM. And we did extensive rides uh, that extended into the 600-mile range where you actually had to get into some sleep deprivation and go down for a sleep and then get back up and ride again. And I think that's where uh, going over the 500 miles, that gets the racer into a, a, a region of, of uh, that they don't normally get into just by going the 500 miles. So those are the two areas that I'm targeting, and it, it's turning out to be very successful. I've had a much better 
response to it than I ever expected. Now, what kind of course logistics and how much scouting did you have to do to put together a thousand mile route? I'm not going to tell you how many route recon trips I've done down that area, but I've come up with an excellent route. The route itself uh, goes through Alpine, the Big Bend region, through the Big Bend National Park, actually. It goes uh, on out through Marathon, Fort Davis, McDonald's Observatory, Fort Stockton, Sanderson. And the the pretty cool thing about it is, is the route, even though you do travel some of the roads uh, more than one time, you don't travel them the same direction. So, in other words, if you go from uh, Alpine to Marfa one direction at one time, you'll the next time you come through there, you'll come back the opposite direction. And it, it is challenging. There's a lot of climbing, I think. Uh, the ride with GPS shows it at about a little over 41,000 uh, vertical feet of climbing. I'll be interested to see how that compares to some of the racers after they finish the race to see what they have. Uh, it is a challenging course. You can use what's good about it is as a ram qualifying and, and training for ram, <clears throat> it's a chance not only for the racer to come out and get into that over 600 mile range where he does have to go down for a sleep and do and then have to get back up and ride again. It's also an excellent training for the crew because you know as well as I do that crews come out to Oceanside, California, and they rent an RV. Half of them have never driven an RV. They don't know anything about them, and then they're thrown into the uh, the high pressure and the, all the the excitement of RAM and being on RAM itself without ever even having trained or, or trained the crew. But no country for old men is in the most rural, the most remote, the most rugged area you can imagine. Uh, and it's an opportunity for a cruise to actually come out and uh, learn about leapfrog, learn about direct follow, learn about handoffs in a very rural, remote area. And, and, and the crew can, can uh, actually train just like the racer does now it is very rural and remote how are services out there what do racers need to bring along and uh, what about gas availability i have a sign that i will be posting at the pre-race meeting it says start full and fuel up often as often as you can because the services are limited uh there's uh but at all the time stations, if you go into the website and click on the, the leaderboard, it will have all the line, it will have all the uh, time stations on there. There are services at all the time stations, and by services I mean uh, there will be fuel nearby. There will be sales service if they can call in, but there will be a very small window for that sales service because you might get three miles from the time station and have no service. But at the time stations themselves, there are services. So. Um, it's going to be very crucial for the racers to to call in in a very small window at the time stations. Now, your race date's the last weekend of October. What's the weather like out there? What should uh, racers and crew bring, and what should they be prepared for? Uh, the reason I picked October is because I don't have any other month that I can pick for that area. It's The, the, the temperatures are, are too extreme both directions in any other month. So October is my best window of opportunity. You can expect we'll be racing <clears throat> down in the down in the desert part of the Santa Elena Canyon and Big Bend National Park in Castellon. And you can expect high temperatures in that area uh, up into the 90s and maybe even in the 95. It just depends. We will also be racing up in the Fort Davis Mountains and during the night up at elevations of around 61, 6,200 feet. You could also expect temperatures dropping down into the lower 40s. So you have a, a large temperature range there. So racers will need to bring equipment and clothing for both extremes of, of the temperatures. But that is, it is the best month. And it could be, you know, you, we could hit it right, and you could have, like, highs in the low 80s during the day and, and lows in the low 50s at night. And it's just it's just great racing. Now... Are there still registration openings? Um, actually, the 383 and the 1,000, I have just closed registration on that because the slots are full on that. The National Park Service limits the number of people that I can have come through the park. And uh, the 383 and the 1,000 is closed at this time. If anyone does want to enter either of those distances, I encourage them to contact me 
uh, by email, and the email is on the website, ultradex.net, and just click on No Country for Old Men. I encourage them to contact me personally in case uh, of any cancellations or, or people that do not start, and I can set them up. Now, the 208-mile Ed Tom Bell race is unlimited. It does not go through the park, and it's unlimited, and registration is still open for the 208. Uh, you are listening to Over the Top Radio. We're visiting with No Country for Old Men race director Dex Took, and we are giving out our Cardo BK1 duo word of the show. Remember, write this down. Send it to me via Facebook message or like Over the Top Radio on Facebook and send it to that page. The word of the show, a little tricky for you this time, is giant. Giant, G-I-A-N-T, which is the classic movie that was shot in West Texas just outside the town of Marfa. So, Giant, the BK1 duo word of the show. Dex Took, what are the cutoff times for each event? Uh, the cutoff time for the 1,000 mile is 96 hours. The cutoff time for the 383 is 32 hours. And the cutoff time for the 208 is uh, 14 hours, I believe. I'd have to double-check that. It's either 14 or 16 hours from the 208. And, and how did you, you come up? Mo- oh, go ahead. You mentioned the movie Giant. Uh, the route, the 1,000-mile route, does go right through Marfa. If you ever get there and, and want to see some really great uh, 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 memories of the Giant movie and everything, go to the Pasena Hotel. It's just great all the different things they have in there and i don't know if you're aware but every year the city of marfa closes down their main street uh once a year closes down their main street they bring in bleachers for people to sit in they charge people a hundred dollars a ticket and they come and sit in the bleachers dressed as their favorite giant movie character and they have a big screen outside and they all watch the movie again and that must be packed Yes, it is. It's cool, too. Now, how did you come up with, or how did you determine the names for each of the distances? Well, I love that. The 208 Ed Tom Bell is is the character of the sheriff in the show. And the 383 Anton Chigurh is the meanest bad guy in the world ever in the show. And the Cohen Brothers, 1,000, the Cohen Brothers are the directors of the movie itself. So what was it about the 383 that wanted you to bring in uh, old Anton, which I think is one of the most <laughs> chilling performances in cinematic history, and it's just as gnarly in the book? <laughs> yes. That's exactly why I wanted him to be the 383. He's my favorite. I mean, uh, I have, I'm on the I'm on the warm chairs for the – uh, southern tier for all these race uh, cross country guys that come through, and uh, they uh, they come through Alpine and come over, over into Del Rio. And one of the first things they ask about or talk about is that movie and how they stayed at some Warmshire's host in Alpine and watched the movie No Country for Old Men. And they were getting chills while they were watching it. Now, part of me would love it if you did this. Part of me is just cringing at the thought, but tell me that you don't award your overall winner of the 383 a. Uh, one of those cattle killer thingy. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. But we do have a special award I want to tell you about. It's called the Murder Maverick Steer Award. And the Murder <laughs> Maverick Steer Award goes to the racer or the crew member or the official or the volunteer that uh, exhibits the the spirit of the of the Murder Maverick Steer Award. And the, and the Murder Maverick Steer is a, a folklore that happens in that region. And it is a, let me get the real thing here. It says the legend has been told many times around the campfire. Supposedly the murder maverick is an omen of death. It's a big steer, sometimes red, sometimes black, sometimes another color. It is branded on one side with the word murder in letters a foot high. If a man or woman gets close enough to read the brand, Either that person or someone close to him or her will soon be murdered. And so that's just part of the legend. And so, but I have a Murder Maverick Steer Award that my wife, Johnny, has made a special uh, 
drawing of the steer, and we're going to present it to the person, or like I said, the racer, the crew member, the volunteer or official who displays the spirit of no, of no country for old man with true grit, courage, inspiration, and sportsmanship. So we do have a pretty unique uh, award. Is this the first year that you've given that out? And if not, who are yes. some past winners? Yes, it is the first year I've given it out. And the reason I'm giving it out is because there was a racer in last year's race that just depicted true grit and sportsmanship and inspiration and courage. And I, and when he when he was at the race, I thought, man, I wish I had something special to give to that guy. Well, I didn't have it. Now you do. Yes. Now you've got a great field. Tell us who are some of the favorites for each division. Okay. Um, in the 1,000 mile, we, we do have a great field. Uh, <clears throat> we have Norm Hagman, who is the uh, uh, recent Texas uh, Ultra Cup Series uh, champion. We have Scott Lucard, who just recently is the 500 mile world championship, uh, who just set the course record at the Tejas 500, blew it away by two hours. We have Chris Brennan, a guy coming from New Jersey, who is an Epic Five uh, Ultraman. And Epic, I don't know if you're familiar what Epic Five is, but it's it's five Ironmans in five days on five different islands in Hawaii, five consecutive days. Uh, Chris is coming down to do that. Uh, he's wanting to get into the ultra racing he's thinking about Ram. We also have Andy Welch, who is a, uh, a Ram Challenge Series and Marble Falls 400-mile champion. Uh, we have Jose Bermudez, who is a raw veteran and a RAM participant. He's, he didn't make it in RAM last year, and he's coming back with his own unfinished business. Uh, we have a couple of guys by the name of Valerio Zamboni and Chris Hoppo Hopkinson that are coming. I'm sure the Ultra World is familiar with them. Valerio's from uh, Monte Carlo and one of the top uh, senior ultra racers in the world. And Chris Hopkinson is a RAM veteran and uh He's, he's coming also. And then we also have a female in the 1,000-miler, a, a lady by the name of Leslie Caldwell, and she's coming to challenge 1,000 miles. So we have a real good field. We have we have nine solo competitors right now, and I'm expecting I've got a slot reserved for one more that's trying to get in now also. In the 383, it's going to be very competitive. We have 13 different competitors in the 383 this year. Uh, we have names like Gary Apple, the guy that won the 200 last year. We have names like Ray Brown, who's under the leadership of Marco Ballo right now and turning into great numbers. We have Anthony Parcells from Florida, who has set several Florida State records and also won a Ram Challenge Series. There is uh, uh, Wayne Dowd, who was on the uh, team for, uh, for military uh, 2013 Ram team that set the course record for crossing America, and I think it was like five days and three hours. They averaged like 24 miles an hour. Unbelievable. So we have a very competitive field in the 383. Uh, in the, and there's an, also another team that I don't know if you've ever heard of them or not. There's a four-person team in the 383, and they're named Fred Boatling, Rick Boatling, bringing on Chad Pinson and John Rowling. So we're very excited to have the the the, the Boatling team to come join the, the Ram. I wish we was going to have you there, George. I was going to advertise that this is probably the first time or the only time that ever that the Boatlings and George Thomas were on the racetrack at the same time. I would have loved to, Dex. I'm sorry that that just <laughs> did not work out. <laughs> <laughs> I was really looking forward to it. In the now, what, 100 mile race, in the yep. 200 mile race, let me tell you about one more guy. We got a guy named Andrew Willis, who is the owner of Holland Racing in Austin, Texas, and puts on the driveway back race. He has his own racetrack, his private racetrack, where he has crit races every Thursday night. It's about a three and a half mile loop or course that he can set up. And Andrew Willis is a slash cat one racer who has never done an ultra race in his life and is wanting to branch out explore some new areas and he is coming down to do the 200 mile so 
all the racers, the 383s, the 1000s, and the 200, all start the first 80 miles together. So all of those 1,000-mile guys and 383 guys are going to have a rabbit out there to chase when Andrew takes off. Now, that is funny because Andrew Willis was a junior in San Antonio when I was racing USCF down there. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. So yep. Oh, yeah. yeah he, he was very guy. good as a youngster, and sounds like he's uh, still very good. Yes. Now, what as we're closing here, what is your personal favorite part of the route? Oh, uh, to be honest, it's I was I was doing a route recon about about two weeks ago, and I was in Big Bend National Park, and. They've had rain. It's pretty. It's green there. And there's a little seven miles, just a seven mile stretch. And it's the Chisos Basin Road. And you go, you go up to the Chisos Basin, and it's seven miles. And it is, it is switchbacks. It is tough climbing. It is great. It's seven miles up, seven miles back. Probably take most of the riders over an hour to do this. Uh, it's just beautiful up there. The, the scenery is magnificent. The 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 mountains, uh, it's, it's beautiful. And, and you might even, I mean, there are mountain lions and bear sightings in that area. So it, it's just a beautiful part. And that is my favorite part. Now, again, tell us the website. You still have registration openings for the 200-mile race. Uh, but if someone is interested in the others, they should contact you. And what's the best way? Uh, the best way is go to ultra.net and click on the No Country for Old Men uh, link and all the information about the races there, or they can contact me at my email, dextook at gmail.com. And that's Dex, D E X, took is T O O K E. All right, had a great visit with Dex Took, race director, No Country for Old Men, and a fantastic ultra racer in his own right. Uh, once again, want to let you know what the Cardo BK1 duo word of the show is, which is giant. If you're trying to win that, please send that answer to me on Facebook message or like our page over the top radio. And once you have, you can always send your answers there. Dex Took, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, tomorrow we've got Jim Ryan coming on, who's racing the 508 for the umpteenth time. And uh, looking forward to chatting with him. But, Dex, it's always a pleasure. Thanks so much. Thank you, George. See you at the 508. I'll be helping crew Dave Huffy. For With the Top Radio in Boulder, Colorado, I'm George Thomas. <laughs>